You have mentioned deprescribing in in connection with nutritional supplements. Could you just explain how this fits together? So with regards to deprescribing, I think we need to consider um, when people present with symptoms, what might be the potential cause of those symptoms. So, for example, um, if you give, take an example of somebody presenting with dyspepsia or indigestion, you could consider that the cause of that may be related to their diet, but also some nutrient deficiencies can increase your propensity to have indigestion, nausea, as I've already mentioned, for example, a magnesium deficiency can lead to nausea. And there are various other nutrients that can influence our appetite and also our digestive symptoms. Um, also what we eat directly, as we know, can cause um, indigestion. And therefore, when you consider that what you're eating is influencing both your nutritional status, but also your propensity towards symptoms, if you correct your nutritional status, you may reduce your symptoms. So for example, a proton pump inhibitor may be given for indigestion and a proton pump inhibitor can also reduce your absorption of various nutrients. So for example, proton pump inhibitors reduce absorption of um, magnesium, iron, um, vitamin C, various other nutrients. So whilst you're taking a proton pump inhibitor, you may be on as a downstream effect, influencing your nutritional status. If you were to change the way you eat and try and tackle the root cause of some of those symptoms, you then may be able to reduce the need for the medication. If you reduce the need for medication, you may also be reducing the propensity towards further influence on your nutritional status. So I think what's important for us as pharmacists on any, any healthcare professional who's dealing with patients presenting with new symptoms is to consider what might be the cause of those symptoms when it comes to nutritional status. And if you correct the underlying nutri nutritional deficiencies, either through diet or with nutrient supplements, you may reduce some symptoms and may be able to then reduce the need for medication. And again, on a personal level, this is something that I've been able to do. Um, and for the last decade, I've been managing a plethora of different um, types of symptoms and conditions with a nutritional approach, so much so that I've been able to massively reduce my need for medication. Mm, I see. Um, could you also say a bit about food poverty and how malnutrition may not be the archetypal protein calorie malnutrition? I think what's important is for us to stress that it, on the one hand, we're having these conversations about food insecurity and food poverty. But on the other hand, when people present with what is by them, what within medicine are called medically unexplained symptoms, we're not necessarily putting the two things together. And that there are people, there are individuals who will be presenting with what are perceived to be medically unexplained symptoms, especially women, especially mothers who may prioritize their children in terms of their own food insecurity. They may then present to a pharmacist or a GP with symptoms which may be perceived as medically unexplained. Um, and we need to look to see whether or not those individuals have got food insecurity or food poverty and actually whilst may on first glance appear nourished, may actually be malnourished. Because I think traditionally, we've thought that malnutrition looks like somebody who is very underweight and starving. And actually, in a modern day diet scenario, you can have a lot of calories within your diet, but not very much nutrition. You can have a lot of high calorie, low nutrient density foods. And therefore, on the surface, you may look well nourished because you're of a normal weight but actually you may be underneath that because of the poor nutrient content of those foods actually be very malnourished so we do need to consider that people who are presenting to healthcare professionals within the UK may actually be malnourished even though they may not look malnourished at first glance. And finally do you have a closing message for frontline clinicians? Yes, I think what's really important is when people present with new symptoms, either that's 
as a new what appears to be a new condition or maybe potentially the side effect of a medicine is to consider nutritional issues consider whether that individual has potentially got any nutrient deficiencies and trying to correct those with dietary advice but also in some scenarios as i've mentioned they, the individual may also need nutrient supplements as well but to consider that if people are presenting with new symptoms whether or not that could be have a nutritional basis and try and tackle it from that perspective as well. Lisa Jameson, thank you very much for talking to us about nutritional supplements, medicines and deprescribing. That really has been fascinating and thought provoking. For more information about Lisa Jameson's work, please visit the website using the links in the description. And please subscribe for more news, videos, journals and podcasts. For updates straight to your inbox, please follow the links below. And thanks for watching.